This is a research video for the state of Pennsylvania. So this video pertains to you if you are researching the counties that all the counties in Pennsylvania as far as the things that you want to get out of that um, about out of the research phase is the county information for their process how they typically handle their tax foreclosures and in the count the state of Pennsylvania they do things a little bit differently <clears throat> overall in general in the state they have a kind of a two-phase process uh, phase one is called an upset upset tax foreclosure upset sale just like beer mad upset sale and the term upset is actually um, just means the minimum amount that a property can sell for it's typically the amount of back taxes owed on a property plus the fees so not you don't have to know that or remember that but just uh, for background information that's phase one so that would happen uh, that might happen for example if it might happen next month and there might be a big list of properties that are going to the upset sale and anything that doesn't sell after that sale goes to the judicial sale so there's two phases so what you're going to have is for the upset sale you're going to have generally a larger list of properties so let's say you have a hundred properties that are going to go to the upset sale and that's typically an auction based process and again a lot of those will sell so let's say you start with 100 after that you might have for example 20 properties left over that are then sold at the judicial sale and the judicial sale always happens um, months later so because because after the upset sale the the property actually goes through the court system and a judge will um declare that you know the county now owns the property so there's some legal stuff that has to happen between the upset and the judicial sale but in general when you're researching the state of pennsylvania we're looking for this information we want to know when the upset sale happens as well as a judicial sale and that's going to go into the CRM you already know how to put in a property and put in the important dates I just wanted to go through one sort of added step for Pennsylvania this really pertains to all the different states but it has to do with adding the proper alerts to and slightly so as you can see, we already have a ton of counties. There's a lot going on. They all have their own unique process. So it's really important to get the proper alerts into, into the CRM. So every day when you log in or whoever logs into the CRM, an alert's gonna pop up onto the calendar telling them what to do. So let's say, for example, you have a county that, um, that might have let's say that let's say they haven't scheduled <clears throat> here's a scenario let's go I'm gonna open a Google Docs give you some scenarios so that you know when to put in the proper alerts okay so let's do a scenario one scenario number one no sales are scheduled they're postponed or let's say no sales sales are scheduled so let's say you go to a county their website says we currently have not scheduled any sales okay so if that's the case you still want to put the county in as an organization um, but you're going to want to add an alert just a follow-up alert so that and you want to put it in for one month from now so one month from now let's just make a example here you're going to add a new task that says you know Adams County whatever the county name is put in the name of the county here um, check status and just put that in there for 
one month from whatever day you're you're doing the research. So today's August seventh. I'm going to go September seventh. Always make sure that it's a weekday. Um, if it falls, if you accidentally put in a weekend, we might not see it. So make sure it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then always make sure to do a reminder. This is when it's going to actually show, um, tell us what's going on. So put the reminder in there. This stuff isn't really important. Um, I do like to put in any URLs or, or information here. So let's say that the, the county website said that it was postponed because of, uh, because of COVID. Put that in there. Then put, here is the link to check on the status. And just put the link in there. Or if you have a link that would have updates from the county website. <clears throat> Seems pretty simple and straightforward. But just keep in mind that a month from now, you know, it could be someone different looking at this, or maybe if it's you, you're like, I can't remember what was going on with this county. There's so much going on. And if you have just a little reminder note to yourself, then it's super helpful. Let's do a different scenario. Let's say here's a common scenario you're going to run into. Okay. Sale is scheduled, but the county is not. Uh, published the property, the list of properties yet, okay? This one you're going to need to use your own judgment. Um, typically, I'll put these in, you know, if they have a, if they have a, a sale scheduled for two months from now, I'm going to put this reminder in for maybe either a week or two weeks away. And if it's if it's if it's scheduled in the very near future meaning like if it's scheduled within a month you're going to probably want to put an alert for one week away to get the property list because you know that they're probably going to publish that property list sooner than later if the sale is scheduled for six months away then um you could you could obviously put in an alert that is uh that is further out because typically Typically, a county won't publish anything, you know, until no more than two months before the sale happens. So <clears throat> um, let's do another scenario. Scenario number three is sale is scheduled and we have a property list. Okay. So this is good. This is what we want. We want the sale to be scheduled and also have a property list. In this scenario, we're going to add an alert to. We're going to add an alert for 30 days after the sale, or sale, to update the property list. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, this is important because we don't want to have stale properties on the website. It's okay if they're, you know, 30 days old. I think that's actually okay because a lot of times properties won't sell right away. So it's okay to have those listings on the site. Um, but we're going to have to update the site. We go in and, and you can, you know, check a box that says this property has been sold. Um, so those are the different scenarios. Um, I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So this is the, the the PA Pennsylvania tutorial, and that you know this in conjunction with the introduction video on researching properties should get you everything that you need to do to finish the task. Um, thank you for your help. Again, one quick reminder too is to make sure there might be multiple people working on a particular state. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm working on a couple things here that I'm doing so. You may just want to check in here and uh, just, you know, before you research a particular county, make sure that it is not already into the CRM. So thank you for your help.